1015 FM K Don. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action. And bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. All right, All right everybody. everybody. How are we doing, How today? Are you doing today? We have got a good one going on for you. It is the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. I am Mark Hoke. Very happy to have you with us. And uh, very happy to have a good friend on the line here. Hopefully we've got our audio okay. Jose Volante, let's see if we got you. What's up? Uh, looks like we're having some. Uh, having some uh, how about now? Can you hear me now? Now I can hear yeah, you. I can hear you. Good. But, Sound uh, like the but, Verizon uh, commercial. Perfect. What's going on, my brother? How you doing this morning? Ah, uh, doing okay. Uh, doing okay. Looks like we're, looks uh, like we're uh, getting a little echo, getting off, a little you echo off you though. Oh no! Got to figure that out. All right. So, All right, so let me let me uh, do one thing here. Hang on. All right. All right. Okay, bear with me, Jose. Let me let me take you off here for just a sec. All right, so let's uh, get things rolling here on the show, and uh, of course, we have some huge news coming up. As of course, The Rock made his way back on the sh- onto uh, Raw this week, and boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what a major major challenge laid out by him as. He said he wanted to be at the head of the table, and yikes, this has now thrown a major wrench into the situation at the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania as he is now maybe derailed Cody Rhodes. This is going to be something else as he is looking forward to possibly a WrestleMania challenge against Roman Reigns, maybe pushing Cody out of this situation with the rock and boy, Oh boy, what a difficult situation this is going to be for the bookers. Well, maybe not for the bookers, but you know, this could screw up Cody just a little bit. We're going to talk about that as uh, we go through the show. We've also got all sorts of other things happening at the Royal rumble. Plus of course the devil has spoken. Adam Cole coming out. We've got a lot of crazy things happen on the women's side of professional wrestling that we're going to get to. Plus, we've got two great guests coming up as we are going to be joined by Stu Myrick from Sports Guys Talk Wrestling and Chris Van Vliet is going to be on as well. So we're going to have both of them joining us on the show. Of course, Chris from the Insight Podcast. So we're going to be excited to have him on the show. So let's see. Uh, let's see if we've got. <laughs> let's see if we've got Jose squared back up with his microphone. Uh, bear with us for one second, and uh, let's try and get Jose back on. Jose, how are we doing? What's up, Mark? Can you hear there me? There we go. A lot there we got you. All right. So I have to. I have to switch it up and improvise. All right. I'm. I'm not in the studio. I'm out of town. But hey, I'm making it happen. We're here, man. Let's get going. All bro. right. But, there but we you, go. Hey, but you you already got it started, though. I was gonna mention it, but you got it started. Fatal four-way match, Royal Rumble, all the stuff that's going on, especially with the rock coming back and throwing a wrench into Roman Reigns' plans. I mean, there's so much to talk about on today's show, Mark. I'm really excited. Yeah, and and you know, Roman Roman kind of threw a wrench into his own plans on this, didn't he? You know why would you say that? Well, so of course, you know, we had the, the match on uh, on uh, SmackDown where we had the three-way going on that was going to determine who was going to wrestle Roman at the Royal Rumble, right? So AJ and Orton you know, and are going at it, you know, with uh, – and just, you know, this, this match is going great, you know, the, the three-way that was happening. And I, I don't know what they were thinking. L.A. Knight in there as well. And the three of them are just pounding on each other. And they decide to interfere in the match and make it a no contest. 
So Nick Aldis comes out and said, ha, that's what you think. And makes the Royal Rumble match a four-way. So now Roman Reigns at the Rumble is going to have to survive Ellie Knight, AJ Styles, and Randy Orton. And this is going to be really interesting. And Jose, one thing that everybody is speculating about is, is Roman actually going to lose this match now with The Rock having thrown down the gauntlet saying that he might want to be the head of the table. This is, you know, this is going to be interesting, especially with you know, Cody wanting to finish the story. And, you know, there's other people out there, too, that could win the Rumble now. And I don't know, man. This is going to get very interesting as we move into WrestleMania season. I, I've got a feeling, and a lot of people are kind of feeling like, you know what? Let Roman lose. Let him lose this match. You and I were talking about it before the show, though. We're like, I was asking him, like, how many, how long has it been already since Roman has lost his last match? It's been a few years, obviously. But you mentioned it with The Rock coming back. It, it, it begs that question. What are the plans? I even told you CM Punk coming back. I mean, WWE has got a lot of things going on right now. And it makes you wonder, is Roman Reigns' time finally come? I don't know if that's necessarily the case, because why would you end it now? If The Rock is back, I say create a story, build it up. Don't just hand over the championship or anything like that to The Rock. What do you think? See, I don't want I don't want The Rock to win the title. I don't want him to win the title. I think he you know, he's too busy. He's doing everything in Hollywood. If he comes yeah. back for a match, you know, that's fine. You know, let him come back and let him wrestle Roman, but it shouldn't be for the championship. You you have a story there where if if he's going to wrestle Roman, he the, it doesn't need to be for the championship, right? No, not at all. It doesn't need to be for the championship. It can simply be for the the status of the head of the table, right? I think that if you let Randy Orton win this match, that's enough to give Cody his chance to wrestle Randy You've got a built-in story from years and years ago for that, and you're all set, right? You don't need to have uh, have Roman and Rock be for the championship. Look, you've got the main event right there. You've got the big match. You don't need to have the title involved. You know that's just you know that's what I've been saying for a while. If the Rock comes back, and plus, you know, I think I think it would be kind of an insult to Cody too. You know, yeah, 100%. because because if you if you take Cody and and shut him out of a championship match with Roman, well, now you've got to drag that out for at least a SummerSlam, maybe to next year. Is that look? It, I I don't think using the word fair is legit. I mean, you know, hey, look, stuff happens in pro wrestling and you know in any other entertainment venue. If someone comes along that's going to a bigger star, yeah, mm-hmm. it's the way it goes, man. It's the way. So it let goes. me ask you, th- let me ask you this question, sure. Because you're around a lot of these pro wrestlers, you're around a lot of these up and coming wrestlers. Not just doing the show, like you go to events, you're there, you see what it's like. What do you think the locker room is like right now with the WWE, with all these superstars on Raw, on SmackDown, with all these moves that are being made? With all these former big names coming back, like you mentioned it, there's guys that are putting their time in doing what they have to do are where they are because of the time that they've put in. Now you have these two big entities coming back into the WWE. How much of a chatter is going on in the back locker room right now, Mark? There's got to be a lot of people that aren't happy. I would imagine it's kind of a mixed bag. Look, you're getting you get eyes on the product. You get eyes on the product. You're making more money. But at the same time, it's like, oh man, you know, they're, they're kind of taking my spot and I'm going to have to really step my game up. You know, look, CM Punk has gotten victimized by that before. You know, he knows how that feels. I mean, he's been, he was very angry that he lost his spot a couple of times to guys coming in like that. Rock being one of them. So this is a tricky position for him. Uh, you know, now he's, he's that guy. That yeah. just showed up and was like, hey, here I am. And taking a, a position away from somebody who may have been wrestling Seth Rollins for that championship. So, you know, an LA Knight, here's a guy who 
had the rocket on his back, and now now, now there's a couple blockers from him getting to that championship. Yeah. And so his time may not be coming. Now I'm wondering if he's going to be headed into maybe taking on Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, you know, that's a possibility. I'm also wondering if the new stable that has been formed here with Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain is Karrion Cross the guy that goes after Gunther. Mm? Uh, that is a s- distinct possibility. You know, you're going to need a real badass to take Gunther out and Karrion Cross with Paul Ellering in his corner, of course, the former manager of the Road Warriors, you know, has now been reunited with the Authors of Pain. That's going to be very interesting to see if maybe Cross is the guy to take Gunther out. Hard to say. But, yeah, I mean, look, you sign somebody and upheaval happens. So, yeah, the locker room's probably got to be an interesting place, I think. Excited, but is there going to be a little a little jealousy there, a little a little anger? Possibly. Robert De Niro said it best, just, just a little bit, just a little bit. You insulted him just a little bit. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I think there's a lot going on back there. And I didn't even think about L.A. Knight. Like, you definitely – that guy was literally on a trajectory completely to the moon. And now it seems like it's it's going straight now. You know what I mean? It's going sideways. So, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in that locker room and what ends up being said, if anything, because you know a lot of these superstars are not shy. They'll jump on podcasts. They'll talk about how they feel. And it's very open, so we'll see what's going to happen moving forward. Yeah, this is going to be one hell of a WrestleMania season. And we're going to step back and take a break, Jose, and because we are going to have our first guest coming up here very shortly as we are going to welcome in the man from Sports Guys Talk Wrestling, one of our great friends of the show, Stu Meyer, who's going to be joining us here after the break. So we appreciate everybody being patient as uh, we had to fix that little audio problem with Jose. But, uh, and, we're, and by the way, Jose, happy to have your smile and face back on the show, man. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I got busy there for a bit, but thank you for letting me come on back and just hop on in here and chop it up with you, man. Looking forward to having a lot of fun. We will. You bet. All right. So everybody stick around. And when we come back, we're going to be joined by Stu Myrick. And don't forget, second hour, the man from Insight, Chris Van Vliet's going to be on the show, too. That's always fun. We. We're going to go deep into the mind of Chris Van Vliet. He does it to everybody else. (laughs) So it's time to get a little revenge on Chris. So stick around, everybody. We've got a whole lot more on the Mark Oak Show, the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment here on KDON, 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. Stick around. We'll be right back. One oh one five FM KDON. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we are back on the Mark Hoke Show here on Kate on 1015 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. <laughs> Jose Volante. He's he's my guy. Up here, man. There we there go. There you go, buddy. <laughs> All right. Bam. Let's go. All, All right. right. Best in pro wrestling news and entertainment here on 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. We are very happy to welcome in one of the best in the biz. Very excited to have him join us here after a hugely busy week and a half in pro wrestling to kick off the new year. My God, we got devils. We got rocks. Got all sorts of craziness going on around the world of pro wrestling. Jose, let's get him on the show right now, shall we? He is let's do it. Stu Myrick. Stu, what's up, my friend? What's up, fellas? How you doing? Oh, man, you're looking good, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. Oh, happy New Year to you, too. And thanks for the love, Thanksgiving love that money, background. by the way. <laughs> well, you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a busy uh, several days in pro wrestling. You're right. Man, I it, it's been it's it's kind of hard to know where to start, but you know we were talking. Let's start off with everything with the Rock first, and you know where this is going to take everything. Of course, the Rock laying down the gauntlet about taking on Roman Reigns. Do you agree with my assessment that this match should not be for the world for the Universal Championship, and he should lose at the Royal Rumble? 
do you think that that's the way it should go, or should we keep the belt on Roman? Well, it's okay. So we know the match at Royal Rumble is going to be the four-way with AJ Styles, Randy Orton, L.A. Knight, and Roman. Yeah. Um, that's because, you know, what happened on SmackDown. There was talk that, so you got Elimination Chamber in February in Perth, Australia. Apparently, the Western Australian government requested, didn't demand it, but requested that The Rock show up. Hmm. So, and that's, again, this is, you know, your rumor innuendo, not to be confused with the podcast that my good friend Nick Hausman hosts. Um, so, look, now, full disclosure, I have a connection with the Rhodes family. Dustin Rhodes is a dear friend of mine. I work for him at his Rhodes Wrestling Academy, which is you know, just out, you know, it's in the Austin suburb of Leander. Uh, I'm his lead commentator. So, uh, and, and I know Cody. I still want to see Cody finish the story in Philadelphia at WrestleMania 40. I still think that's, that's what needs to happen. And I have said, I've said since SummerSlam, the bloodline, Roman Reigns as the universal champion, that has jumped the shark. It's time to take the belt off of Roman. So put all that together, the notion I have, the theory I have, is that it is indeed Rock versus Roman at Elimination Chamber. Wow. Okay. Now, does it need it? Does it need the title? No, no, it doesn't. I think they will put the title on the line just so Roman can claim that victory over the Rock. You know, the whole head of the table. The Rock is, you know, arguably the most. You know, he says he's the most electrifying man in all of entertainment, and there is you can't argue it. I'm sorry. It's it's it is what it is. So to claim the victory over Rock. That would be big going into WrestleMania. I don't know if you have Cody win the Rumble to challenge him or if you have CM Punk win the Rumble to challenge Seth Rollins and Cody Roman just happens. But I still say Cody versus Roman at WrestleMania and finally Cody finishes the story. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I think Cody's got to finish this out. I don't think that would be fair to, like I said, well, fair, like I said, fair is not, may not be the best word to use because we all know how pro wrestling goes sometimes. It's not fair. But, you know, Cody should be finishing the story out. But, you know, a lot of people are, I've seen it up online so many times that if you had WrestleMania where you had Roman Rock, Cody Orton, and Seth against CM Punk, no one's going to complain about that at WrestleMania. That's that's no. a pretty that's a pretty good trifecta of matches. You're right, and and that's the thing. I mean, look, Rock Roman, yes, that's a WrestleMania worthy match. Obviously, they've been trying to book that for the last two or three WrestleManias. Actually, uh, going back, I actually going back to Tampa. I think uh, they were trying to do it for WrestleMania in in Arlington. Didn't happen. They tried to do it last year in in Los Angeles. Didn't happen. So maybe finally it happens. And you're right. I don't think too many people would complain if it is Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania. I just, it just, it puts Cody in a weird spot. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I Again, I, I think he needs to have his moment. Well, another guy who's going to get, could get lost in all this is LA Knight. Where does L.A. Knight go? Now, is L.A. Knight the guy to take on Gunther? Uh, do, you, do you find another opponent for L.A. Knight? What do you do with him? I mean, it, it, it's a it's a log jam up there for these guys, and you know it's it's a good problem to have, I guess, for for WWE to have all these guys at the top. But it's almost right. like the mid card is is nowhere to be found. You know, you're right, and that's and that's kind of the weird thing is, um, you know. WWE is as successful as they have ever been. Let's let's be honest. They they're breaking gate records and attendance records and viewership and merch, all that good stuff. And they are it's it they're on a roll. 
the likes of which we have not seen, uh, I would say, even going back be, before the, the days of Hulkamania. But, yeah, you've got a lot of top stars, a lot of main eventers that are in that picture. If I were, you know, if you know, the first thing that comes to my mind, L.A. Knight versus Logan Paul for the U.S. title. Because let's, let's be honest, Logan Paul is going to keep the title at Rumble. Um, and I think he'll, you know, if he has a match at Elimination Chamber, he'll, he'll retain there. I would think it's L.A. Knight versus Logan Paul. Uh, if if for no other reason you you just keep you know you keep the brand, you know because L.A. Knight and Logan Paul both SmackDown stars, whereas Gunther is on Raw. So, uh, and that's the and then that that it, you know that kind of enters the question of okay, well then what happens to Gunther? And I'm sure you know. Look, we've got it's it's January seventh, so you've got three months to figure out who to, who to put up against Gunther. Gunther's already broken the record. He's, he's got the longest reign. I think mania might be the time to take the title off of him. If for no other reason, then then he can get inserted into the world title picture. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, another guy who I just mentioned a little while ago is carrying cross. You know, that could be a really fun feud to see Gunther get into, you know, with Paul Ellering on the other side. And you, know, you could have some great matches with Imperium going against, uh, you know, the Authors of Pain. And, I mean, there, there's so many possibilities. I mean, I mean, Stu, this is like fantasy booking. It's crazy. You know, and we, we were not at this point with WWE a couple of years ago. Well, not no. even close. I mean, Jose, you're sitting there like, my God, what do we do? It, it, it's true. You mentioned it the right way. It's like it's like playing fantasy sports. Who do you sit? Who do you put in? Who do you take out? Who do you make a you know a game with? It's crazy, man. There's so much going on, and we mentioned it earlier with with bringing back old guys and and having current stars that have done their job and are trying to grow. I mean, it's just so much going on right now. It's, it's fun times for the WWE, in my opinion. It really is. And and again, like like I said, it's probably I would say the most successful they've been in in you know possibly ever as far as carrying cross i think there's got to be i think they need to take time to let this trio with the with the authors of pain gel and at the same time kind of build carrying off up uh, because you look at the booking of carrying cross up till now oh it's been terrible it's yeah <laughs> it has not been good and and you know it's kind of like eh, you know i'm not really I get more excited for carrying cross just because you get to see Scarlet. Let's be honest. <laughs> but so so I think I think having this, you know, collection with the authors of pain, with precious Paul Ellering, let's let's let that rehab cross's image, his stature, then have him go for a title. So I I would say don't have him in a title match at Mania. Not yet. I would definitely I don't know if you wait until Money in the Bank, maybe, or one of the summer one of the summer events. I would just say have him, you know, if or no if no other reasons, have a, have a trios match with you know name your favorite you know babyface trio. Um, I would do that at Mania. Yeah, interesting thought. Yeah, this is. <laughs> There, there's so many interesting possibilities at WrestleMania this year. Of course, we got to survive the Rumble first, and Lord knows who's going to win it. it. It's, you know, and and you'd love, to, you know, you would say maybe Punk would be the guy to win, but Punk doesn't need to win it either. You almost wonder if there's going to be some sort of surprise winner coming out of this thing, but we'll see. And and then of course on the other side with AEW, another group that is rich in talent and trying to figure that all out too. Of course, they just had the big, big gun go down with MJF and, uh, you know, he won't be insulting me anytime soon again, as he's <laughs> going to be out for a while, uh, with that shoulder and the hip and uh, the shoulder injury sounds pretty bad, Stu. It sounds like he's going to be down for a long time. So the devil and his crew, Adam Cole are going to be running rampant for a while here. Uh, so, 
you know, pretty interesting storyline. And what do you, how do you think about how all that ended up? Um, having Adam Cole as the devil made sense. That was, that was the most logical thing. It didn't have, I'm not sure it had the sizzle that they may have wanted, but again, that was the only storyline that made sense. Uh, like you said, Max is out with injuries. So you're basically going to have to have the undisputed kingdom kind of tread water for the next however long I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be at least past double or nothing in May. Um, and it wouldn't shock me if we don't see something until the build to all out the, that, that group, it, it may, it makes sense where you have Taven and Bennett, and Adam Cole, who were, they were the original kingdom, all going all the way back, you know, to the old Ring of Honor days. Right. Uh, and, and you know, and New Japan as well. That makes sense, having them, having them. And Roderick Strong, of course, tied with Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era back in NXT. So that all makes sense. And they're all Ring of Honor, you know, they're the Ring of Honor originals, uh, for lack of a better term. The, the, the puzzle piece that puzzles me is Wardlow because Wardlow was making these promos to go after Max. Now Max is out. Max is no longer the champion. And I have this bad feeling you're going to have Wardlow once in, once again, just kind of sitting there. Yeah. He'll power bomb a few people, you know, multiple times, but it's like, why do we care about Wardlow? Hmm. And I hate to say that because he's a fantastic talent, but it's going to be, I think the focus is going to be on Adam Cole and Roderick Strong and the kingdom. And I, and, and that's, it's going to be a shame, but I think we're, it's going to, they're going to have to figure out a way and they're got to be careful about how they book them to keep them strong until Max comes back. And well, and, and assuming Max comes back because again, we are now in the quote bidding war of 2024. We are for, you know, as, as far as we know, there are the rumors, but we'll let that, let those lie. Um, so until Max is healthy enough to come back, they're going to have to find, find something that can captivate everybody until then. Well, and- Stu, I, I, I got a quick, you might if, real quick. I have a question for you with this business. Obviously it's all based about, you know, who's performing, who's doing what, and there's all ratings based as well. Do you think with the injury and with everything that you just talked about and what's going on, does this kind of hurt the brand a little bit for them moving forward? Um, not having the storyline, not knowing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think it does a little bit. Um, Mac, you know, Max was attracting quite a few eyeballs on TV. Uh, especially this run, crazy it sounds, as a baby face, which, look, <laughs> no. uh, you know, look, <laughs> Max worked uh, Inspire After Death here in Austin for a long time, so I got to call several of his matches. And to think of the transformation he's had, it's that is what pro wrestling is all about. It's about that story. It's about those moments. The fact they won't have MJF, you know, for – however long it means they've got it they've got to rely on another you know another guy i like the fact that this past week on dynamite and on collision and on rampage it seemed like you're starting to see some younger guys come up they advertised for dynamite this coming week ricky starks and sammy guevara i know both of those guys you know very well there, in fact, you can probably see in the there the poster to my right. My very first independent card was Inspire. It, that time was called Inspire Pro here in Austin, and they were in the main event. And Ricky and Sammy worked Inspire for so long. Um, you know, they did indies all over, but they were Inspire faithful. So we know we know Ricky and Sammy quite well. Ricky used to live just down the street from me, so that's going to be. This is going to be where guys like Sammy Guevara and Ricky Starks and 
Darby Allen, they're going to have to be elevated. And, 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 you know, and I mentioned Darby Allen. Look, we are less than two months away from Revolution, the final match of the Icon Sting, who, and, and, and I, by the way, I'm going to try to make my way to Greensboro because, look, I've watched Sting going all the way back to the Blade Runners in Mid South Wrestling. Whoa. So, you know, Sting Sting was I would put Sting and Dusty Rhodes as my two they were my two guys. And Okay. Um I can respect I've you. been I've been I was I was blessed enough to talk to Sting a few years ago when he was he was at a independent card up in Dallas. Uh and it was it was like one of my that was that was a bucket list interview. It was also probably one of the very few times that I've been starstruck in pro wrestling um, just because, you know, it was Sting. So, uh, but back to that. So, you know, Sting's got his final match at, at Revolution. After that, it's time to bolt, you know, what do you do with Darby? You got to, you know, book him to where he can start looking strong again as well. So I'm hoping that what we see in the in the few in the next few months is a lot of these younger talents getting getting propped up, getting chances to succeed and get the get the fans to get behind those younger talents. Yeah, this is going to be a, an interesting run here. And so do you want to stick around for another seg? Uh, I'll be happy to. All right. Well, why don't we do cool, that? Because cool. got a lot more to talk about. And, you know, Stu, you're a good talker, my friend. Can tell you. <laughs> can, can, can you tell Stu does radio? Can you tell? And I like the background. He's, he's got a good background behind him. I yeah. mean, the posters, the setup, it's perfect. What do you, what do you want from the guy? He's yeah. doing a great job. Absolutely. I've so, been very lucky. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take this. Uh, take another break here. And when we come back. We're going to have more on the Mark Hoke Show here on K Dawn with Stu Meyer from Sports Guys Talk Wrestling down there in Austin, Texas. So stick around, everybody. We've got Jose Volante and I'm Mark Hoke. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget, second hour, Chris Van Vliet's going to join us as well. We are jam packed today with a ton of pro wrestling. So stick around, everybody, here on K Dawn. We'll be right back. One oh one five FM K Don. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. And we are back on the Mark Hoke Show here on K Don. One oh one five FM, it is the talk of Las Vegas. Very happy to have you join us, and uh, we've got Jose Volante. What's going on, Jose? I uh, can't hear you, Jose, so I'm not sure what's up there. Stu, Stu Meyer from Sports Guys Talking Wrestling going on here, too. What's up? All right, so we got Stu at least. I'm not sure what happened to Jose there, but let's see if Jose wants to unmute his mic or something. I don't know what happened. We lost Jose's mic, but... We got Stu. So there we go. Here. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Hey. Come on, Jose. Still I, making it happen. I, I, I know you're on a, in the studio. You're, 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 you, almost you're, sound, you almost sound like Michael Irvin. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> Jose, Jose did me a favor today, and he is massively improvising. So it's all good. Well, go. well, Stu, I noticed something going on here over the past week and a half. Number one, nobody's talking about the Women's Royal Rumble, but. Outside of the ring, there is a major war going on in women's wrestling. Deanna Perrazzo goes to AEW. Julia is apparently going to WWE. Mercedes Monet is now apparently going to AEW after saying no and then getting turned down by WWE. Camille from the NWA is apparently going to WWE. Serena Deeb, we saw her promo. She's apparently back in good graces with AEW. She's going to be back on the scene. Jade Cargill just got sent up to the dungeon, the heart dungeon, and she is training up there. Dude, the women 
are getting to be more important. And we are now going to see the women's divisions in both major companies being escalated like you would not believe what is going on here with the ladies in professional wrestling. You know, it's, it's been, you know, the last few years, the women get more, more, more of the spotlight. You see more of them, you know, it, more main events involving women. And it's, um, and yeah, this, this year, you know, look, we've, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of free agents hitting the market on January one, you know, on both, you know, both men and women, but spe- you know, that the women's side, you mentioned, you mentioned Deanna Praza making her debut on dynamite. And then you Camille who I think she had like the fifth longest reign as NWA women's world champion. Uh, now she apparently is headed to NXT. Um, you mentioned uh, Julia, who's still the current uh, NJPW Strong Women's Champion. Uh, she may be heading to WWE as well. It's it's a great time. I and 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 I think it's you know that the free agents we're seeing a whole lot of movement, and that's what makes you know that's part of what makes wrestling exciting. We just saw Nick Nemeth, the former Dolph Ziggler, at New Japan at Wrestle Kingdom. Mm-hmm. I mean that that was like, okay, this could be fun. You know him and him and David Finley, David Finley capture, capturing the global championship. Uh, look, women's wrestling has been on the rise for for the last you know two three years at least, especially coming out of the pandemic, and I expected to see it get more and more attention. Um, it would not shock me if we have a women's main event on night one of WrestleMania. I still hmm. think it will be Seth versus whoever for the world title, be it CM Punk or whoever. But it wouldn't shock me if there's a women's main event. Um. You know, there's been, and there's a couple that you know, you know, Charlotte Flair out with the with, with the knee injury. She just had surgery, yeah. So you're not <clears> going <throat> to see her till pro- at least after SummerSlam. Uh, but there is, the, you know, there's a lot, lot of great stuff to look forward to. Uh, there's a young lady named Maddie Rinkowski who was one half of the NWA Women's World Tag Team Champions. Uh, worked a lot of the independents here in the state of Texas. Uh, apparently, she has signed a deal with NXT, uh, and we may see her debuting soon. It's it's an exciting time for women's wrestling, and I think we're going to see the the evolution of that of that picture uh, throughout 2024, and it's and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, and and AEW really needed it, and you know, I, you know, I think Mercedes probably was asking for too much money, but they AEW needed her, and getting Deanna Perazzo in there, you know, that just seriously bolsters the division that desperately needed two more big talents. You know, I and I understand why Trinity is going to WWE. Obviously, her husband's there, and you know, the whole circumstances that were surrounding that. But, you know, I don't I don't know if she's going to be as big of an impact player as anybody thinks she is with all the talent that's there. I mean, you know, if I like if somebody said to me, you know, who do you want, Trinity or, or Jade Cargill, you know, despite Jade's shortcomings right now, now I'm signing Jade Cargill in a heartbeat. You know, nothing against Trinity, but... You know, the the future the the ceiling is so high for Jade, you know I I I wouldn't even think twice, you know and I I just you know I I just wonder about that you know when you know Jade's and just thinking about Jade Cargo after getting trained up and then getting her in the ring with a Bianca Belair, dear Lord, I mean that that's a year long feud right there. It is. Um... Trinity Fatu has had a had a yeah, she's had a wonderful run with Impact Wrestling. Of course, they're you know the current Knockouts World Champion. Uh, she rejoins WWE. You know, um, 
I think part of it was how how Naomi was booked in her oh, yeah. previous stint. There, she was. It, it always felt like she was the second fiddle, whether it was to Sasha Banks or or whatever. I'm hoping, and again, we've got to kind of. We also have to understand creative is different now. It is. And, you know, you got Triple H with the book. You got, you know, I think there's going to be a difference, and I think that Naomi could be a could be a major player. There, she is. There's a simple, back. yeah. There's a simple solution: put her with the bloodline. Put her I, with the bloodline. Yeah, That's it. I don't and, agree. I, yeah, I don't agree though because I think I actually I think the bloodline needs to they need to dissipate. I need they, they it, it needs to be over because I said as I said. The bloodline soup that that whole that thing has jumped the shark. It's time to separate them. Have Solo turn on Roman or whatever, and 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 blow that thing up. Bye. I'm with it. And then, <laughs> and then just let and let let Naomi, you know, have her battles with Bailey, with Io Sky, with Bianca Belair. Uh, you, you name them. I mean, have just have her go at it. Uh, have her be in contention for a title. Whether it's you know Eos guy or Rhea Ripley, I I don't I, I would not put her I wouldn't even I wouldn't even think of putting her you know with the bloodline I wouldn't and I definitely wouldn't put her with her husband because we've seen how those tend to kind of they 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 fall a little bit short so I would say just let them let them do their own storylines. And and le- and leave it be. Fair enough. We'll agree to disagree on that. Hey, well, we got about thirty seconds. Stu, how can everybody find you, buddy? Uh, Sports guys talking wrestling available via all major podcast providers. Uh, new episodes drop every Wednesday. Great wrestling insight from great wrestling insiders. Uh, check us out. And by the way, Washington over Michigan in the college football national championship. <sighs> Am I the Let's only, go! I'm the only Pac person 12. taking Michigan. Final Pac-12 person. Let's you know go. What? Finish Look, it out. You're all wrong. <laughs> you're all Look, wrong. My Longhorns had no business winning that game. The fact they had a chance at the end uh, speaks to luck. But Michael Penix is is that guy. And I think he's going to prove it against Wolverine. Go dogs. <laughs> 24-21. Wolverines. <laughs> You're out of here, Stu. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody. We appreciate it. Thanks, appreciate guys. You, Stu. All right. There you go. Stu Myrick, everybody. Always great to have him on the show. And when we come back, kids, Chris Van Vliet from Insight is going to be on. Going to be a great time. Oh, man. Always fun having Stu around. So stick around. We're going to have a blast. If you haven't heard Chris on the show, you've been missing out. Jose Volante, I'm Mark Hoke here on the Mark Hoke Show. Stick around. We got a whole lot more on pro wrestling. We will be right back. Jump in the comments. Let's go. Want more of the Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show and visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today and thanks for listening.